Hello everyone, welcome to Online Mass TV. My name is Jake's Animal, as you all know. Again, we have a very nice exponential equation. So let's take our solution without much waste of time. So we'll pull down our question solution. Let's write down the question, which is 2 to the power of x is equal to 3 to the power of x all over 2 plus 1. Now, the first thing we're going to do here is to make one side of the equation to be unity. And so, what I will do here is to divide through by 2 to the power of x and 2 to the power of x here. So, if I do this, we're going to have here 2 to the power of x. Then, here, we divide this also by 2 to the power of x and also divide this 2 to the power of x. Easy. So, this, this leaves the system. We now have here 1 is equal to your... 3 to the power of x all over 2, all over 2 to the power of x plus your 1 all over 2 to the power of x. Easy. Now, if you look at this, we can rewrite this exponent here. So, rewriting this, we're going to have your 1 is equal to your 3 to the power of 1 all over 2, okay, and all over 2, everything all raised to power x. Okay, then blocks. Yeah, we can equally rewrite this as 1 all over 2 all raised to the power of x. Easy. So let's rearrange this now. If we rearrange this, we're going to have this to be your uh, 3 to the power of 1 all over 2 all over your 2 all to the power of x. There blocks your 1 all over 2 all to the power of x, this is equal to 1. Here we have a challenge. How do we do this here? If we find the differential of this function, okay, so if we are to differentiate this, can we get our x from here? Um, that will pose some challenge here. Okay, okay, can we use the Lambert W function here? No, it will also pose some challenge here. So what we do here? The only way out here is to recall our um, trigonometrical identity. Okay, recall we have a uh, sine square theta plus cos square theta equal to one. <laughs> so you discover that this expression here is a similitude of what we have here now. So if we are to draw an analogy between these two, so what does that imply? So it also implies that your sine square theta is equal to your 3 to the power of 1 all over 2, all over 2, all raised to the power of x, and your cos square theta is equal to your 1 all over 2, all raised to the power of x. Okay, let's see if we're going to get the value of x from here. Now, from here, let's see again. What will not be the value of theta as far as this expression is cosine? We can get two possible values for our theta, which is 30 and 60 degree. Okay? So, from here, we cannot say, let theta be equal to 30 degree or 60 degree. Now, the question is this. I know you may wonder or you may ask, why are we not picking 45 or 90 or uh, 180 degree to be our theta? If you look at this carefully and you plug this into your calculator, this will give you um, 0 0.8660, right? Which will correspond to uh, a VIX. And if you plug this into your calculator too, okay, this will give you 0 0.5 which is equivalent to our uh, cos 60 degree. <laughs> okay, that's why we are picking 30 degree and 60 degree. Clear? All right. So with that, let's take this simpler one to get our x from here. So if we put um, 60 into this, this will now give us cos square 60 degree. Okay, this is equal to your um, 1 all over 2, close bracket, or uh, into this. What is called 60 degree? That is 0 0.5. Is that also good? So if we have that as 0 0.5, so we're going to have here your 0 
all squared equal to your one all over two all squared. Again, let's continue on this other side. So what we do here, let's square this. If you square this, this is going to give us 0 0.25, right? Yeah. So this is going to give us 0 0.25 equal to, um, yeah, we have your 1 all over 2 or raised to power your x, please. Sorry, yes, s. Uh, where did I see this 2? So we have x here. So we're looking for x. How do we get our x now? Then we take the ln of both sides of the equation. So let's ln this side 0 0.25. Then we can change this to decimal point 0.2. So we have here ln of um, 0 0.2. I'm uh, sorry, 0 0.5, please. 0 0.5 all raised to power x. According to the law of um, logarithm, we says that if you have your uh, log, your let's take this time m to the power of k. Move this k backward. So this will now give us k into log our m. Is that not so? So we can move this exponent here now backward. So if we do that, we're going to have here ln of 0 0.25 is equal to your x ln of 0 0.5. Close bracket. We're looking for x. So all we just need to do is to divide by ln of 0 0.5. Five, there here, yeah, all over ln of 0 0.5. Close bracket. All right, so let's erase this. All right, so this goes with this. So we now have our x is equals to the ln of 0 0.25, close bracket, all over the ln of 0 0.5. Close bracket. Now, if you impute this into your calculator, this will give you minus one something something. And this will also give you minus uh, something something something. So, when you do the manipulation using your calculator, this will give us here your x is equal to a one point nine 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 seven. Blah 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 blah. All right. So approximately, we're going to have our x approximately to be two. Okay. So this is the value of our x. And if you put in 2 into our initial exponential equation, you are going to get the answer to be same. In other words, the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side. All right. So this might be end to this wonderful, nice exponential challenge. If you learned something from this video, give the video a thumbs up. And if you are not clear in the process of the explanation in any of the steps, then drop it in the comment section so that uh, we reply to you. We are good at reply to comments. Again, this is all I know, Stevie. And in case you thought I forgot my name, my name is T. Jakes Amemo. <laughs> Guess what? Every one of us at All I Must TV loves you because you are always there. You are the reason for this channel. Bye for now.